Russia has finally demonstrated a nuclear-capable intercontinental ballistic missile after when they launched a new ballistic missile test some time ago in Plesetsk, in northwestern Russia. The intercontinental ballistic missile is named RS-28 Sarmat missile, which also known as Satan-2. The Sarmat missile, capable of carrying several Avangard hypersonic missiles. A single Sarmat missile in the sky can unleash multiple Avangard hypersonic missiles and hit several different targets, without being able to intercept any missile defense systems. Its range allows the Sarmat missile to fly along any trajectory across the North or South Pole to hit any target around the world. Russian President Vladimir Putin said the Sarmat missile can hit any target as long as it is on Earth. The Sarmat is a three-stage liquid propellant missile with a range of 18,000 kilometers and a launch weight of 2,081 metric tons. Quoting the Missile E3 page, the missile has a length of 353 meters and a diameter of 3 meters. The Sarmat can carry a payload of 10 tons and can fit up to 10 large warheads, 16 smaller warheads, a combination of warheads and a hypersonic glide vehicle. The Sarmat is designed to evade anti-missile defense systems with a short initial boost phase, giving enemy surveillance systems a small window to track. The missile has earned the nickname Satan-2 from Western analysts for being one of Russia's next-generation missiles Invincible, and which also includes the Kinzel and Avangard hypersonic missiles. This truly unique weapon will strengthen the combat potential of Russia armed forces, ensure Russia's security from external threats, and make those who, in the heat of aggressive rhetoric trying to threaten Russia country, think twice. On July 25, 1946, the first underwater nuclear test, codenamed Baker, was conducted by the United States at Bikini Atoll as part of Operation Crossroads to study the effects of nuclear weapons on Navy systems. Some 70 ships were anchored at Bikini Lagoon for this test. A Mark 3A atomic bomb with a yield of 23 kilotons was detonated at a depth of 27 meters, halfway to the bottom. Seven target ships were sunk while eight others were seriously damaged. The shot resulted in extensive contamination of the ships and the target area. On May 14, 1955, an underwater nuclear test, codenamed Operation Wigwam, was conducted by the United States, about 800 kilometers southwest of California. It still holds the record for its yield and depth in all underwater tests in history. The purpose of the operation was to determine the vulnerability of submarines to deeply detonated nuclear weapons and to evaluate the feasibility of using such weapons in a combat situation. Three small, unmanned target submarines designated SQUAWS, each packed with cameras and telemetry instruments, were submerged to the same depth at surface ranges of 1,650, 2,100, and 3,000 meters from surface zero. A Mark 90 atomic bomb nicknamed Betty, with a yield of 30 kilotons, was detonated at a depth of 610 meters about 4,200 meters from the bottom. As a result, only one of the target submarines was sunk, while others received no fatal damage. On September 21, 1955, Novaya Zemlya, an archipelago in the Arctic Ocean, 
saw the first Soviet underwater nuclear test, which was conducted in a bay named Chornaya Guba, to study the effects of nuclear weapons on warships, materiel, and waterfront structures. The test device was a 533mm T-5 torpedo tipped by an RDS-9 nuclear warhead. The torpedo detonated at a depth of 12 meters, 43 meters from the bottom. The yield was 3.5 kilotons. 11 target warships, including destroyers and submarines, were anchored at ranges from 300 to 3,000 meters from surface zero. As a result, one of the destroyers was sunk, one of the submarines was critically damaged, and other target ships received minor damages. October 10, 1957, was the day of the first nuclear torpedo launch in history. The Soviet 533mm T-5 torpedo, tipped by a nuclear warhead, was launched from an S-144 submarine in a bay named Chornaya Guba at the Novaya Zemlya archipelago and detonated at a depth of 35 meters under the surface of the bay. The yield was 10 kilotons. Out of 10 target ships, anchored at ranges from 240 to 950 meters from surface zero, six were sunk. On May 16, 1958, an underwater nuclear test codenamed WAHOO was conducted by the United States in the open ocean outside of Eniwetok Atoll as part of Operation Hardtack. A Mark VII atomic bomb with a yield of nine kilotons was detonated at a depth of 150 meters. 825 meters to the bottom. Seven target ships, which were anchored in a test area at ranges from 700 to 5,000 meters from surface zero, received minor damages. On June 9, 1958, Another underwater nuclear test, codenamed Umbrella, was conducted as part of the American Operation Hardtack. Unlike Wahoo, this test was in a lagoon inside Eniwetok Atoll. A Mark VII atomic bomb with a yield of 8 kilotons was detonated under the surface of the lagoon at a depth of 46 meters. Out of seven target ships, which were anchored in a test area at ranges from 500 to 2,500 meters from surface zero, one was concluded to be unseaworthy, while others received minor damages. The umbrella blast created a crater 450 meters in diameter and six meters in depth in the lagoon. The Wahoo and Umbrella tests were to obtain additional data about the effects of an underwater nuclear blast conducted at mid-depth and near the bottom. On October 23, 1961, in an exercise codenamed Coral conducted at the Novaya Zemlya Archipelago, a Soviet B-130 submarine launched a 533mm nuclear torpedo, which covered a distance of 12.5 kilometers and detonated at a depth of 25 meters. The yield was 4.8 kilotons. This blast was the third and final underwater nuclear test conducted by the USSR. On May 11, 1962, a one-of-a-kind underwater nuclear test was conducted by the United States in the Pacific Ocean, about 640 kilometers off the coast of California. An RUR-5 ASROC anti-submarine missile armed with a 10-kiloton W-44 nuclear warhead was launched from the destroyer USS Agarholm. The missile covered a distance of 3,975 meters, went into the water, and detonated 40 seconds later at a depth of 198 meters. As a result of the operation, the new weapon system was successfully tested and additional data about the effects on Navy systems were obtained.
This was the eighth and final underwater nuclear test in history.